Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Bloke Daz. I'm Office Bloke Mike. Okay, Mike, what do you know about the west coast of the USA? Uh, not a great deal, I wouldn't have thought. No? We've got New England down there, things like that. New uh, England? That's the east coast, mate. Is it? No, mm. yeah. Oh yeah, it's the west coast, so, isn't it? West coast, yeah. yeah. California. That's California, what that's it. San California, Francisco, San Francisco, Los Angeles, all that Seattle, Portland, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Oregon. Yeah. Oregon. yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, this is a video on um, why so few Americans live in this huge area of the West Coast. Ah, right. I'm guessing because it's maybe desert or something. It's quite populated. It's quite populated, isn't it, the West Coast with LA, San Francisco. All the main ones know, down there. San Diego. Yeah. I don't know, all the sort of like big areas I would up guess there. So, Seattle, yeah. Washington, yeah. Uh, Washington State, all up there. I'm guessing the further inland you go, maybe hotter it gets and towards the desert, Nevada yeah. and stuff, is it, or something? But I think the Pacific know. Northwest, you know, your Seattle uh, sort of area, Portland and Oregon and all around yeah. there, Washington State. I think that's quite can get quite cold in the winter. Ah, right. I think it's yeah, very, very so. cold. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit very mountainous, isn't it? I think is it Spokane around there, which oh, is, is it, uh, right? quite okay. mountainous uh, yeah. on the other side of a mountain. So yeah. quite a lot of national parks and stuff like that out there. So. Yeah, but it's a big old country. There's a lot of space to fill, isn't there? Hell, hell, hell you know, of a lot of space. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah. a big old country. So, so this is uh, why yeah. so few Americans live in this huge area of the West Coast. Let's go. Right. The West Coast of the United States is a heavily populated area of the country overall, from San Diego and Los Angeles to San Francisco and Sacramento in California, and Portland and Seattle in the Pacific Northwest, the West Coast is home to over 50 million Americans. But while the entire region is home to a lot of people, this large area in the middle is almost entirely empty. So why don't more people live in the empty West Coast? Hello and welcome to Geography by Jeff. Today we're going to look at an area of the West Coast of the United States that has very few people living in it. Which is weird because if you look to the south of this region, you have the bulk of California with over 40 million people living in it. Wow. And if you look to the north, wow. you have Portland and Seattle, two major Pacific Northwest cities. But right in between, very few people call this place home. And as usual, there's a geographic reason for this. But first, consider supporting me over on Substack. Premium subscribers get access to these extra special perks. And of course, every subscriber helps me continue to make geography week in, week out. So sign up today. Often when one thinks of the West Coast, it's of the tech-heavy Bay Area or Seattle regions, the Southern California beaches in Hollywood, or even the quirky, bicycle-friendly Portland, Oregon. But nestled in between these areas lies a beautiful stretch of land comprising the northern portion of California and the southern part of Oregon, a region also known as the state of Jefferson, which we'll get to in a little bit, but for now let's run through the geography of this region as a whole. Starting in the southern part of the empty west, the California coast is renowned for its rugged beauty with rocky bluffs, golden beaches, and huge moraine ecosystems, but also its vast forests such as the Tahoe National Forest, Trinity National Forest, Six River National Forest, and many more. These forests are home to some oh. of the tallest and oldest trees on Earth. And protruding out of these forests is the southern end of the Cascade Mountain Range and the northern end of the Sierra Nevada Mountain Range. This would include one of the most prominent mountain peaks in the entire country, Mount Shasta, with a height of 14,179 feet. The U.S. Geological Survey currently monitors the mountain for volcanic activity and ranks it as a very high threat for volcanic eruption. Moving north, we have Southern Oregon, often overshadowed by its northern counterpart, is a sparsely populated but still geographically rich area. The Oregon coast is a blend of sandy beaches, towering sea stacks, and ocean cliffs. Inland, the Rogue Valley offers a fertile landscape known for its agriculture, including a burgeoning wine industry. With a climate that's warmer and drier than the northern part of the state, it presents a unique biosphere within Oregon. Perhaps the most iconic feature of Southern Oregon's landscape is Crater Lake. Located in the Cascade Mountains, Crater Lake is the deepest lake in the United States and second deepest in North America. It was formed by the collapse of Mount Mazama nearly 7,700 years ago. Finally, the empty west eastern boundary is marked by the Great Basin a high desert landscape that's home to a unique array of plant and animal species. It offers a stark contrast to the coastal and forested regions of Southern Oregon and Northern California, having far more in common with Nevada than the other areas. The Empty West is a truly striking region of the United States. But if you haven't picked up on it yet, it's this exact unique geography that makes it almost impossible to establish large population centers. We're going to explore why that is both historically and in the modern day. And of course, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. More fun geography videos are just a single click away. But first, today's video is sponsored by Incogni. Your data has a geography unto itself. When you travel around the web and do things like buy stuff, create accounts, or manage your personal business, there are data. This process is 100% automated. 
kick back and watch as your data disappears from the web. It's that easy. As part of this sponsorship, the first 100 people to use <laughs> What do you think the um what do you think the uh, the reason it's, it's empty? Well, it looks a bit more like a national park type of area, doesn't it? With yeah. a lot of forests there and you've got the mountains, mountains. From, from the south and the north coming together. Yeah. So it, I think it literally looks like a maybe a difficult place to build. You'd have to be knocking forests down and things like that. Yeah, but if, you get, if you get the areas where you could live, how spectacular would the views be? That would be amazing, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. But I'm just wondering some of the best beaches, it's saying, and yeah. coastal roads and coastal areas. And then you've got forestry and you've got mountains. Oh, it looks amazing, doesn't Rivers. it? Rivers. Absolutely, yeah. You've got pretty much everything on your doorstep, haven't Absolutely you? Absolutely incredible. Yeah. But I'm just wondering whether, because there's large cities above and below it that they don't want it spoiling yeah. and they'd, they'd like to keep it as a buffer because, you know, yeah, if yeah. you start building in places like that, then it could just stretch yeah. up and it just, yeah, possibly. You know, things expand too much, don't yeah. they? But, uh, let's see. Hmm. You use the code Geography by Jeff with the link below, we'll get 60% off Incogni. So sign up today and be more proactive about securing your data. In the beginning of the 1800s, the United States was still largely confined to the eastern part of the North American continent. However, with the acquisition of the Louisiana Purchase of 1803, which added a massive 828,000 square miles to the young nation, expansion to the west was inevitable. This acquisition was a catalyst for the United States expansion, propelling explorers like Lewis and Clark to venture into these new territories and report back on their potential. The discovery of fertile lands and the allure of new opportunities set in motion a wave of pioneers who embarked on challenging journeys to the west. In particular, early settlers made their way to the Willamette Valley of modern-day Oregon by way of the Oregon Trail, a wagon route stretching over 2,000 miles from Missouri to Oregon. This was a particular draw for settlers because of a series of geologic events that occurred thousands of years prior called the Missoula Floods. These floods were the result of a large glacial dam breaking and flooding eastern Washington and the Willamette Valley over and over again. And each time it happened, it would bring more sediment and soil that would eventually create one of the most agriculturally fertile areas in the Willamette Valley. And with the incredibly large Columbia River running along the Willamette Valley, it made growing and shipping agricultural products to the world much easier. Between 1841 and 1869, it's estimated that more than 400,000 settlers, miners, farmers, and ranchers would use the Oregon Trail to reach western lands. The next significant push westward came with the California Gold Rush in 1848. The lure of gold brought an estimated 300,000 people to Northern California, drastically altering the state's demographics. San Francisco morphed from a small settlement of around 200 residents in 1846 to a booming town of about 36,000 by 1852. To facilitate this migration and make the journey less treacherous, the Transcontinental Railroad was constructed mm. between 1863 and 1869. This massive feat of engineering linked the existing Eastern Rail Network with the Pacific Coast at San Francisco, effectively bridging the continent and heralding a new era of westward expansion. The passing of the Homestead Act of 1862 further encouraged westward migration by providing settlers with 160 acres of public land, nearly free of charge. In exchange, homesteaders were required to build a dwelling and cultivate crops. This act led to the distribution of 270 million acres of land by 1934, largely in the western states. This steady flow of settlers to the west continued well into the 1900s, bolstered by factors such as the Dust Bowl of the 1930s, which drove many farming families from the prairies of the Midwest to the southwest part of the country. But while the Oregon Trail and Columbia River drew settlers to the northern part of Oregon, and the gold rush and port of San Francisco lured vast amounts of people to the central part of California, the large swath in between didn't have much of anything pulling people to settle it, which is why growth during this period of time was rather anemic compared to its northern and southern neighbors. Mm. Today, the empty west is one of the least populated areas of the country, and much of this has to do with the natural geography of the region. Most human settlements begin because of a variety of factors that include access to fertile lands for agriculture and places that would naturally be susceptible to establishment of shipping and trade. Unfortunately, this region makes both of these incredibly challenging. Outside of the Sacramento Valley in Northern California, this entire region is very mountainous. Between the Sierra Nevada and Cascade mountain ranges, there's relatively few low-lying flatlands available to establish large cities. And those that do exist, such as in the Rogue Valley in Southern Oregon, are fairly small and not amenable to establishing transportation infrastructure, such as large ports. The Rogue River, for example, is much smaller than the Columbia River that connects Portland, Oregon to the- <clears throat> Yeah, I'm guessing if you did make a town or city in a place like that, it's sort of a bit in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? It's like, not, what's the advantage to it? It's not really, because you're not far you know, from the coast. 
Yeah, she's got I access to so. water. Whether it's deep water, deep water enough to bring, I mean, you certainly be able to bring something in, regardless. Yeah. But you'd be able to, you know, you've got if Rogue Valley's doing all what did he say, vineyards and uh, yeah, and wines, I think so. Yeah, I don't know, if you're if you're growing enough, if you're bottling enough wine there to sort of like ship around, you can. It's not far from, you know. I mean, also, you've also got Napa Valley and places like that around yeah, there, so right. you compete yeah. with them. But at the same time, you've got access to water, which could you know potentially be a port. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Not too far away, you know. You don't. I mean, it's mountainous and all that kind of stuff. I get what they're saying. But you know, just, access to roads to get to the port and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, it's just these days. I mean, how many times is it like a new city created? Even like over yeah. here, you know China I mean? went through loads, didn't they? I, yeah, China I think went they through did. a massive boom of them. Absolutely, yeah, um, they were. Yeah, over here, I can't remember the last. Milton Keynes probably the last one I can think of over here. Same here. That's a biggest. I think yeah. that was a town as well. Wasn't town, it? That yeah, was Milton Keynes, town, wasn't Milton it? Keynes, and, War- and Warrington. Warrington were the last two. Yeah, yeah. I, I can think so. of. I can't think of any others. Yeah, but, but we're des- we're in desperate need of them. Well, we probably are, aren't we? But mm. it's sort of like over here. Obviously, the space is a bit of a premium, isn't it? A bit more than maybe places like the states. Yeah, because but we won't build on certain areas. I don't know. You yeah, go. That's right. You drive from here to Scotland, and he's in empty barren oh. land for miles and miles and miles. Yeah, there is space, but so then there's plenty of space. You're talking of infrastructure and yeah. transport links, and because there's a big bit of a divide between north and south, mm. and you know, supposedly over here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a strange. I mean, you look at you yeah. look at places in the mid in the middle of the country. Yeah, then when you talk about transport links, there you're talking rail or, tra- or or truck. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's no um, there's no real other option. You can't put you know, you no know, ports. You know, unless you're talking on the river. Yeah, you know, on certain True, rivers. Yeah, but you, you look at you know, right, right in the middle, slap bang in the middle. What you're going to do? It's, it's transport by road, yeah. really. I suppose it's requiring the city as well. It may be in the states. Maybe they've got the infrastructure because I think a lot of other towns maybe do spread out a bit more. Mm. Don't because we've seen Nevada. Yeah, I've seen films mm. of things like that where you know they can still spread outwards yeah. you know a lot of these places can but we're sort of a bit more constricted in that sense i'd say yeah well there you've got the metro areas which sort of like spread out a little that's bit right more, they keep going thing. yeah as yeah. opposed to just the main city yeah but there you look at what, what you've got in between these you've got portland and you've got seattle a bit further up and then you've got was it mm. sacramento Sa- san francisco los angeles that's right. sacramento, yeah. uh, san diego sort of things so you've got them all they're all sort of like lined up already to add another major city there the country will tip over. <laughs> <laughs> Dearie me. <laughs> the Pacific Ocean. And it's this complicated natural geography that makes it so hard to build out infrastructure. Highways, rails, and even ports are incredibly challenging to build within this region. Even on the coast, the Northern California and Oregon beaches are often rugged and rocky with few areas where a sizable port, such as the ones found in Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, could be built. It's for this region that the largest city in the empty west is Eugene, Oregon. With about 380,000 people within the metro region, Mm, Eugene exists in the far southern tip of the Willamette Valley. This would be about one-seventh the size of the Portland metro region. Eugene would be followed by the Medford, Oregon metro region with 223,000 people and the Chico, California metro region with about 211,000 people. Bend, Oregon and Redding, California round out what would be the only other medium-sized cities in the region with 99,000 and 94,000 people respectively. Though it should be noted that Bend has constantly made the top 10 fastest growing cities in the country over the last decade. And it's because of this overall lack of infrastructure and general difference in geography that has led to some calling for a new state to be made entirely. Ah, uh, right, okay. Some watching this video might better know the general area I've been talking about as the long desired 51st state of Jefferson. Tracing its roots back to the early 1940s, residents of several counties in Northern California and Southern Oregon proposed the formation of a brand new state. This was largely due to perceived neglect from their respective state governments and feeling alienated from their urban counterparts. These residents would choose the name Jefferson in honor of the third U.S. president, Thomas Jefferson, who championed the ideals of rural independence and agrarian democracy. The region even went so far as to inaugurate a governor and design a flag featuring two X's, signifying their double cross by the Oregon capital in Salem and California capital in Sacramento. The movement was put on hold due to the outbreak of World War II, but it never truly dissipated. In recent years, the push for the state of Jefferson has seen a resurgence. Modern proponents argue that their rural communities lack adequate representation in state government, leading to discontent over issues such as land use regulations, taxation, and natural resource management. We're going through something similar here. Oh yeah. With um, one of the Scottish islands. Is it somewhere uh, like uh, Shetland? Is that what it was? I think it's the Shetland Islands. And they're saying they want to be part of Norway. I might yeah. be wrong with Shetland Islands. It might be Orkney. It's Orkney yeah. or Shetland. It's one of them. 
And it's, I, I think, it's, I think it is Orkney. Of, not so long ago. No. Yeah, it rings a bell. They want to be a part of Norway. Yeah. Because they, they don't get anything from the country, from yeah, Britain. That's right. They're getting, they're getting sort of like, they, just, they, they forgot about. Yeah. Sort of like left behind. They're not being heard from the, the, the SNP or the, or the government over yeah. here. So they kind of want to break away and go to go to be a part of Norway. Yeah, it's a weird one, then, at this it's day just, and age. Yeah. I think be sort of, mm. you know. Well, you look at some of these places, they just get forgot about. I suppose they do, don't they? I mean, we? I mean, I mean we're very the coast as well, isn't it? I'm guessing Orkney. You look at you look at Great Britain as a whole, right? Yeah. Most of the stuff gets done in London. They get everything. They got oh, all the transport massively. infrastructure. They get the money. They get everything that goes down there. The yeah. North get nothing. Oh, it's absolutely more concentrated yeah. down south. Hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Oh, it has been, hasn't it? Yeah. But and you look at towns like Redcar or or Newcastle and places like Leeds. And they yeah. get nothing. Major cities get yeah. nothing. No transport. No transport infrastructure. The one they tried to put through got pissed off and pissed on. Yeah, sort of thing. And it's, Even it's never going to happen. HS two. Yeah, it's never going to happen. It probably won't. Will it? It probably yeah. go up to Birmingham, maybe. Yeah, and that's probably yeah. going to be about yeah. it. Yeah, won't surprise you anyway. Mm. But have I heard of Jefferson, Jefferson County? Is that somewhere else? It's probably a Jefferson County all over. Ring, the, it, probably in every in every state. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I was going to say it rings a bell. Yeah. Jefferson County. Yeah. Like I've heard it before. Sometimes. Yeah, I imagine there'd be a lot of Jefferson. Or, imagine there'd be a lot of Jefferson states. Yeah, uh, Jefferson counties. Yeah. Um, but I think we watched a video once where they were talking about uh, Iowa and all them sort of, wouldn't they try to get sort of like a Jefferson state as well? Yeah, maybe. Idaho and maybe places like I've heard it. Up, yeah, I think it was Idaho. Might have been Iowa. One of the Dakotas, yeah. maybe. Something like that. They were trying to sort of like push for something like a block there with a with a Jefferson sort yeah. of thing as well. I think it could be right. Mm. Um, this is probably quite a big area as well, isn't it? When we're looking probably at the huge. Map, it's yeah. absolutely huge, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It really is. Currently, the state of Jefferson is more a state of mind than an actual recognized entity. Unfortunately for Jefferson statehood proponents, creating a new state is very challenging and requires approval from both the state's legislature and U.S. Congress. And that's even if the region itself actually still wants to form a new state at all. Not everyone within the area is on board the Jefferson statehood train. But despite these challenges, the dream of the state of Jefferson endures. The empty west is largely empty because of some unique geographic issues. And despite being part of California and Oregon respectively, this region has its own unique identity that is the draw for millions of Americans. And in fact, it's this exact geography and low population that is attractive to the people who live there. I hope you enjoyed learning more about America. Mm. That was interesting. Yeah. That. yeah. Interesting one. It's, uh, I don't, it's, it's, the West Coast is an area I don't really know much about. <clears throat> yeah, same I've never, never spent any time there. Never yeah. even, I visited there a couple of times. I don't know, San Francisco and then passing through, I don't know, um, I think LA or somewhere like that. So I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. It was just passing through, though. It wasn't like a, a stop off or anything. Yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah, I don't I don't really know much about it. That was definitely a big surprise <laughs> to me because it is a huge area that as well, mm. isn't it? You know, it's absolutely barely anyone living there. Yeah. It's, it's just, well, I don't know barely anyone living there. Some of them populations, two hundred thousand. Oh yeah, that's quite qu big. They're quite big, but mm. you know, considering the area that they're yeah. actually living in, I yeah. mean, there's, there's vast swathes there, aren't there? Mm. You know, it's a uh, pretty empty by the yeah, look of it. But, but not much going on commercial it looks amazing, wise. though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It does. You know, yeah. You scenic know, wise, scenic yeah. wise, and mm. everything looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's really a place. Then maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's one of these sort of like tourist towns you could probably bring in to, you know, for tourist USA tourists. You know, go, you know yeah, I think absolutely. A lot of people used to go to places like Lake Tahoe, from what I remember, um, and that's a beautiful spot for people to go. Yeah. It become very expensive, but if you make somewhere like that, so like a similar sort of thing, you've got everything you want there. So there's some smaller cities there. I mean, maybe it would be just a shame if you've got like absolutely huge area in there. Maybe it just spoil yeah, it. Spoil it. I mean, for look it at, yeah. Put stuff like that maybe in the, in the middle of the lake. Just you think, yeah, you know, spoils it. Just it wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't really fit, would it? No, I'm guessing. So no. maybe part of it because it is difficult to build there as well by the sound of it. Maybe it's just yeah, challenging. More, obviously, yeah. you know, mm. a scenic type of you know, going mm. away for weekends type yeah. of place. I like learning but, on things like that as well. It's just yeah, good, it's good information. Because like I yeah. say, so you always think West Coast, you always think, yeah, just top to bottom swathes, think, yeah. absolutely, you know, full. But, but you see when the when the migration came from the East, you've seen that how, yeah. how populated the East was compared to the West. There was nothing it's in huge, the West, wasn't, wasn't it? it? Yeah, it's all in New yeah. York, wasn't it? And it wasn't that long then. ago, 1930, was I know, it? Yeah. Said, yeah. But it's amazing what the railroads did mm. for places like the States. Yeah. Because once mm. they were in, then people just go, absolutely, fill the air places, didn't they? Mm, good amazing yeah. yeah good one that. what was it Ge geography by jeff i think it was yeah good that yeah enjoyed it good hope you it. guys enjoyed it as well don't forget like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one cheers, cheers.